the purpose of this uh, talk is uh, this presentation is just to um, highlight a few different things about CBD oil. It's not meant to be an in-depth three-year uh, three-year thesis or doctorate, <laughs> but it's just to dispel some certain beliefs and just give us a very very basic understanding of what we're we talking about and how can we bring that to your vet if you want to talk about it a bit more and more more for understanding really. So CBD oil, myth or medicine. Before I start, and just a little bit about myself. My name is Lennon, I'm a vet, and I'm an MIT vet, which is just down the road over there. Um, and I've qualified in London, in, back in 04. I've got a certificate in small animal medicine, and my interest lies in acupuncture, exotic species, and keyhole surgery as well. I've also got a sense of humor. So, <laughs> when, when I did that, my boss couldn't take me seriously, I'm like, what? I'm a vet, so, <laughs> so uh, I'm also like yourself a pet guardian, pet owner, so that's my little Gabriel over there. <laughs> it was a little hamster that was uh, brought in by two policemen because it was found wandering in Heatherly up in Oakhampton. <laughs> uh, so they brought it in, don't know what to do, I'm like, I'll take it back. But um, it is a bit of an escape artist as you can see. This drain pipe is, uh, this drain cover is because it's already dug one hole there already. <laughs> and when I came back, you can see they just pick the head wrong and all the head wrong again. So a, and when that little thing here escapes, oh, we can't use the oven for two weeks. <laughs> because it is, you can hear it scurrying now, like, oh, I'm gonna sink. So there we go. Um, I'm also a husband. I'm also a father. And I was also in the army, so I'm a soldier as well. Um, occasional salsa dancer. <laughs> And I'm more recently, I mean, I play basketball, I do water polo, I do roller skate as well. I more recently became a capoeira, which is a Brazilian game. Okay, so just a little bit of my pet practice, just down the road over there. So uh, our core purpose is to inspire pet ownership through education, which is why we have talks like this. Uh, because I firmly believe that, you know, uh, there's a huge wall between pet owners and, uh, and vets. And I want to break that wall down. And I, I believe in empowering the pet owner with more information. So it's not just um, relying blankly on what your vet says that, you know, unless it's a good trust that is being built, it's very hard to just take that in. And to be fair, without this, then you go to Dr. Google, and you ask your breeder, you ask your person who sold the dog food for all sorts of different information. Whereas I, I believe that, you know, you, you, I, I want to do more in terms of education. So our values is that uh, we provide value first, we learn constantly, we produce results, we seek out feedback, and we give positive energy. So that's our practice down the road over there. Hey, since we're boring stuff, let's talk about tonight. <laughs> so, tonight I'm going to introduce a few different concepts to you. It may be tricky to read at some points, but don't worry, it'll just be bigger later. Okay. So, we'll be talking about, um, I'm going to, this, uh, going to be talking about three different principles, and I'll explain to you how we all tie them in together to talk about CBD oil. So we're going to talk about, there's this particular system called endocannabinoid uh, system in our body, uh, CBR versus C, uh, CBR1 versus CBR2. So CBR stands for um, cannabinoid receptor 1, compared to cannabinoid receptor 2. Introducing the idea of uh, cannabis, I'm sure we all have uh, some knowledge of it, <laughs> personally, or smelt it somewhere, it's always my good friend. <laughs> so we talk about marijuana and hemp, you know, CBD oil has always had that whole, what are you doing with CBD oil, you know, it's, are you giving marijuana or something like that, so we'll dispel that uh, myth as well. So we'll introduce the good stuff, what exactly is in CBD oil that helps, how uh, be in introducing these two uh, concepts of THC versus CBD. And we talk about, once we've known these three different systems, we talk about the trinity. How do we get put them all together? And what do they all mean? When do we use it? What is actually available in the market right now? And just a bit of summary, and I'll be finish off with the MT news. So introducing mm. this particular system. Okay, so this is and recently discovered, considering, so discovered in 88 and only just appearing in general literature. So you can almost forgive vets for not knowing this system or not being taught this system because it is actually quite a new system uh, that they just discovered in 88 and only just appearing in the general literature right now. 
it is quite what they what they know is that it is quite important in homeostasis. So homeostasis means keeping things in balance. In Chinese, it's the yin and yang, um, but in you know in Western medicine, homeostasis is very, very important. How our glucose level cannot go too high, cannot go too low, must be right in the middle. We cannot function if we are too cold or we are too hot. Our body likes to keep it the balance in the middle. So this system is very important in balancing that. So the functions include regulating physiological and cognitive processes. So both how we breathe, how we eat, how we think. Fertility, you can also link with, is a uh, vital in pregnancy. Uh, during pre and postnatal development, how the fetus actually develop. Uh, immune system, appetite, pain sensation, and also effects of mood and our memory as well. So we have identified two receptors, one in 1990, okay, so considering they only found out in 88, so what they did was in 99 they found one receptor, and so they call it uh, with a very, very great imagination, a CBR1, <laughs> receptor 1. <laughs> when they found the second one in 93, they called it receptor 2. Okay, so they found two different receptors over there. So what does CBR1 do? So CBR uh, basically stands for um, cannabinoid receptor 1. Um, the functions also include so protective role in oxidative stress, neurodegeneration, and apoptosis. Apoptosis is cell death. So basically our cells don't last forever. Our cells are constantly replacing themselves. So the cells will die, so new cells come. So this is also quite important there. It plays a beneficial role in protecting against cellular damage resulting in oxidative stress. So basically our cells would always be producing waste products just like any machine. You drive a car, producing gas, so to speak. So our cells will be producing waste products. So oxidative, uh, oxidative, uh, oxidative, oxidative stress is when the waste product is not gotten rid of. So when they produce all the so-called waste from the cells, they have to have uh, somehow to get rid of it. Okay? And it also has got a psychoactive component. So for those who are interested, it looks something like this. <laughs> so bearing in mind that CBR, CBR1 and CBR2, they look very, very similar in terms of structure, which is why it is very easy to confuse both of them. CBR2 is found in the immune system, but it's also found in the gastrointestinal tract. It's quite different from CBR1. It's also in the central and peripheral nervous system. So just to give us a bit of an idea, central nervous system means brain, spinal cord. Peripheral is everything that is spinal cord onwards, the little nerves that we have in our hands and in the rest of our organs. The functions include facilitating neural functions, modulating inflammatory response to the gastrointestinal tract, a bit of immunity as well, and also a bit of pain relief. So it also may help Alzheimer's, that's where the studies go into using CBD oil to help Alzheimer's. Uh, IBE, or Inflammatory Bowel Disease, uh, IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome, uh, Crohn's Disease as well. Um, and there, for this one, the important thing is there is no psychoactive component. So this is the bit that doesn't let you go high, so to speak. So if the, uh, if, if the drug is, if the chemical is affecting this particular receptor, it doesn't give you that high feeling compared to CDR1. Yep, that's a different number. It looks like this. So, <laughs> very, very similar. Okay, very, very similar. It's, and they actually have the same amount of amino acids and protein inside there. It's just the way it's arranged, it's slightly different. That makes the biggest change. It's just like how. It's just like how a key for your lock, the tiniest change to your key, totally different story.